Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live, and with us this evening is, is joining us uh, via via uh, uh, internet here is Brother Kellen Davison here, who's uh, sponsoring the meeting in Israel. Him and his wife will be speaking with him momentarily. Uh, right now, we're, we're working on some new things here in our studio here, so when you catch us on YouTube tonight, you'll be able to see him just perfectly fine, crystal clear, but on our live stream broadcast, I still have not moved it over to this particular cast here, so you'll get to hear Brother Kellen on the live stream, uh, but hopefully here within a day or so, we'll have that changed as well. Uh, anyway, I'd like to take you guys right immediately to some breaking news that just came out today. Uh, this is, uh, and you're able to catch this on your screen now, this is going to be, this is a, a riot that broke out uh, against the, the, on the Temple Mount. Uh, hang on one second here, get, get this thing back out here for a second. Um, that, that broke out today, and um, one moment here guys, I gotta figure out how to, I, got, I see that it's not at the beginning, and I won't, okay, it's at the beginning here. Let me just show this here to you guys here so you can see exactly what's going on here. Uh, the, the Arab uh, people there, the Muslims, just began attacking the police. And if you'll notice, too, in your screen there, uh, your, the, the, the other guy there, he couldn't see him for just a brief second there. He's got a radio on. That is the actual, uh, the police that are the Palestinians that are on there, and he's pushing back on the police there that are on the on the uh, mount as well. Uh, very, very disturbing to say the least uh, what's going on there and uh, but nonetheless uh, serious situation that is happening there in Israel on the Temple Mount and, and it just continued on the, 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 the fighting back and forth between the police and the Muslims there on the Temple Mount. Of course they were trying to escort there a, a group there on, on the Temple Mount there and uh, things just kind of went haywire there. Um, in one second, guys, what well, looks like we're having a problem. I got too much internet things going on at one time, so we're going to, we're gonna, we're gonna, let's see if we can do this without actually going offline here. Hang on one second here. Um, if we can get that out. Okay, there we go. That might help us right there. Let's see if we, okay, now we have perfect streaming again there. Uh, I, I don't know what's going on with you guys, if y'all are able to see it there, but for a second there, we were having a little bit of issues there. Uh, anyway, we have Brother Kellen Davison with us. We're gonna be talking with you guys mostly on uh, Pope Francis' visit here to the United, or I shouldn't say here, I'm not in the United States, but uh, Brother Kellen's in Canada there, but there's a lot of concern about, uh, especially in light of the possibility of his trip having a lot to do with the New World Order. Uh, and I would like to get Brother Kellen just some of your thoughts on this as uh, we get going here. Uh, what do you see in his trip? And then uh, I'll share with the people some of the articles that I've pulled up on the screen for them as well. Well, uh, as I, thanks for having me, first of all, brother. Um, as I shared the last time I was on, uh, you know, I started looking at these things last uh, December, not even having the vision for the conference and really didn't even see anything about September until months after the conference had already started to be put together. But I remember when I first uh, wrote one of the articles for you uh, back in December of last year, I covered how um, Francis was already, the Vatican was already putting out his meeting in December, this uh, climate change meeting that was going to be happening. Um, and it'll be a, a big movement uh, that the Vatican and the UN would be involved in. And, um, you know, in that article I wrote for you, I just called out how what he had done the prior year about trying to merge some of the evangelical and the Mormons together, saying that we all are brothers and, you know, we're all praying to God. And then with the um, bringing Shimon Perez and Abbas to the, Vat to the Vatican that same year, doing the same thing, saying that Muslims and Jews and Christians were all praying the same God. It, you know, I was warning about just that ecumenical religious things that, that uh, was being laid last year. So to start this year, um, they, you know, announced that he was coming to the U.S. in September to speak at the White House, uh, meet with Obama, speak to Congress, and then also at the U.N. And things 
things have built up quite a bit since the beginning of the year. Um, you know, they're going to be broadcasting uh, this this um, speech to Congress. They said that um, the Speaker of the House said he wants it to be like an inauguration type setting for for Pope Francis, which I thought was kind of weird language since he's not an elected official of the United States. Why are they trying to set it up like an inauguration? And um, then he came out with the uh, encyclical, um, which I read the majority of that back in June when he released that. And within that, I'll just call out a few things again uh, for those that might have missed it. But he did come call out for, you know, a one world government. And this has been in, uh, endorsed by the U.N., the head of the U.N., Ban Ki-moon, Obama, lots of these global officials all came out and said this document is wonderful. So a couple of things to call out. He says enforceable international agreements are urgently needed since local authorities are not capable of effective intervention. Uh, that's one area where he's saying that, you know, we can't apparently govern ourselves anymore. We need new international agreements to be set up. Another thing he called out in this document is global regulatory norms are needed to impose obligations and, and prevent unacceptable actions. For example, when powerful companies dump contaminated waste or offshore polluting, industries in other countries. So, you know, he's referencing that BP oil spill, but he says what is needed, in effect, is an agreement on systems of governance for the whole range of so-called global commons. Again, he's not hiding it. Uh, um, you know, and, and we'll just go here, last couple of things I wanted to call out is he says later in this document, given the situation, it is essential to devise stronger and more efficiently organized international institutions with functionaries who are appointed fairly by agreement among national governments and empowered to impose sanctions. It says, as Benedict has affirmed in continuity with the social teaching of the church, to manage the global economy, to revive economies hit by the crisis, to avoid any deterioration of the present crisis and the greater imbalances that will result, to bring about integral uh, and timely disarmament, food security, and peace, to guarantee the protection of the environment and to regulate migration for all this, there is urgent need of a true world political authority as my predecessor, the blessed John uh, the 23rd indicated some years ago. So there, there it is in the document. Um, you can go on the Vatican website for people that wanna find it. There's tons of business and all sorts of publications, television that have covered this document. And then he went on a little bit of a world tour promoting this document in communist countries. And what I thought was peculiar was that some of these communist leaders said, yeah, I like what Pope Francis is saying, but it sounds like communism, <laughs> you know? Exactly, uh, exactly. And then, then, you know, right after that document was passed, I thought one of the other strange things was that he held a meeting with all these uh, governors and mayors from around the world within about two weeks of this document passing. I think all these, uh, you know, high high ranking officials, the governor of California, the the mayor of Vancouver and Canada, lots of sixty, I think it was the number of these officials that went to the Vatican to sign on to this new agenda. And so they're already promoting people to sign this document saying, you know, we, we care about the climate. Well, that document was not about climate change uh, at all. It was about you know, they did put climate in there, but as, as I just read, it's about establishing this new order. And he has come out and said it's time to establish the new, you know, new social or economic world order. And people looking at this like it's positive. Um, so since then, yeah, he went abroad and has been championing this. And I just find it kind of uh, disturbing in the U.S. how, you know, it's been all the publication, even about, oh, we're building a new altar for, you know, Francis and we're building this chair. It's just a bit... Um, strange. Um, so that's kind of the, the short uh, summary of that. But then you also had the head of the UN, um, which was around the same time they were passing the gay marriage thing in the US. You know, one second, guys, we lost Brother Kellen there just for a moment. We'll get him back on if you just bear with me just a second here. While I'm waiting to bring Brother Kellen back up here, um, let me just let me just emphasize on a couple of things that he has actually said here. Uh, and, and one of the things that I felt that was very, very interesting is that uh, he, uh, he quotes in there that it looks like communism. And, uh, and I couldn't agree, could, could not agree more. It does look like communism. Uh, and, and that's without even saying it whatsoever. It's definitely, it looks like communism. But now what's really interesting, 
in, in regards to this, and, and give me just a moment here. We're going to try to get Kellen right back on. I'm going to turn my camera off so it might make it a little bit better for him. Uh, Brother Kellen, I turned my camera off on my end. Keep yours on, though, brother, but I turned my camera off here, so I think it might help the internet uh, thing. And I got a full internet at this point now. What I was just sharing, Brother Kellen, with the people here is you, 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 you made the comment here about, uh, you know, where the Chinese and stuff are saying it looks like communism. And I, without a doubt, it's definitely communism. I think that's part of the New World Order. This kind of brings it into my own thought that this is exactly what I saw when I made the video not long ago about uh, does Pope Francis, I don't think I put it as a question, but maybe I should do this as a question, does Pope Francis have a new warlord? Uh, and when I say this, I'm looking at Vladimir Putin because uh, he is certainly becoming a, the, the world power and... Um, and as I've seen the checkpoints being built uh, on the former Soviet border lines, uh, the one that I saw was actually in the Czech Republic on the border of Czech Republic and Austria. And, uh, and, and then, of course, is because NATO has been the Roman army here for the last uh, how many decades? And now it appears that it could be a communistic leader because he's really he's been galvanizing a relationship between Vladimir Putin uh, and, and as we see the United States, uh, the United States economically is, is going to go down majorly, and they may end up turning the United States into a communist country as well. Because clearly, Brother Kellen, I, and I've got this one article, let me pull this one up here for people to look at real quick on our screen. Uh, this, it's an older article, it's on Reuters, Pope calls for new economic order, uh, criticizes capitalism. Now, I'd like for you to comment just a second, Brother Kim, but let me just throw this out here because I've been criticized quite a bit uh, lately. People have been saying, well, you know, Steve, you're just like the Pope. Um, you, you know, you're a vegetarian. You believe in animal rights. Uh, and I'm not going to get into that right now, but, but so does the Pope. Uh, and, but the thing is, if you notice about Pope Francis, to me, he's a true antichristo. He's a true antichrist in the respect that antichrist is not someone that is against Christ. It literally means the word anti is just like the word vicar in, uh, in Latin. It is a replacement for Christ. And that true nature of Christ was that the brethren had everything in common with one another. It was not a capitalistic society in the days of Yeshua. Uh, neither uh, was it uh, as far as the... Um, the, you know, the love that he had for animals as well was very much true. But the point is, is he's taking people in a different, in a, in a total different route when it comes to the economic and social standing of the people, because you'll never see the Vatican give up their billions and trillions that they have in their gold and go feed the hungry. The thing is, uh, as I've seen in some other uh, non-canon books of the Bible, and I'm not trying to put an agenda for anybody, but I actually have seen prophecies that have been that were written that speak about Pope Francis, or not Pope Francis, excuse me, it speaks about a king that would rise up out of the south. Uh, one, he would collapse the, the world economy according to the to the to the document with the Roman soldiers by because of their, their salaries. Uh, and that's interesting, call them Roman soldiers. It's speaking all about the end times here. And then the other thing was that was very interesting was that um, um, he also, it also mentions, uh, I just forgot. <laughs> Everybody's on pins and needles. What's supposed to be next? Yeah, Brother Kelly, you, I'd like for you to kind of comment on that as well, though, as far as the, the one world economic system, uh, that he is trying to do. It's definitely a new, so it's a one world agenda, I should say. Well, yeah, I mean, as I, as I called out in that document he put out, it, it's in there. He doesn't hide, hide what uh, he thinks should be happening. I thought it was interesting also in that encyclical that he um, built on the things that, that the Vatican had done in the past and the UN had done in the past. They called out the, uh, the UN's Earth Charter, which is still in existence, which tries to mimic the, uh, the Ten Commandments, uh, kind of a New Age uh, type thing there. It's, it's definitely different than, you know, where the Heavenly Father in our word says, you know, a good man takes care of his animals. That, you know, just because the, you know, the angel, the devil comes as an angel of light, the word says. So it's not like he's going to show up in pitchfork and horns and, and, and trick people to, to follow him there. 
you know, Yeshua did say that um, if it were possible, even the elect would be deceived. So, uh, you know, I think it's just important for people to go and read these things while they're still available on their websites. But he's definitely called out for that. The UN has been backing uh, this, you know, they said the head of the UN at the same time the gay marriage thing was being passed in the U US, uh, he was in San Francisco commemorating, I believe it's the 70th anniversary of the UN. Um, and he was saying that in this video, which you can still go see, he says that in September, Obama and the world leaders uh, will adopt an inspiring new development agenda to end global poverty. Then he says in December, the international community has committed to reach a bold climate change agreement to place the world on more sustainable footing. So if you connect the dots, the head of the UN is saying that uh, there's a new, um, they're going to meet in a few weeks to adopt this inspiring new development agenda. And then in December, we're going to reach a bold climate change agreement. Well, Francis's document was supposedly about climate change, but it was not. And the media has even covered that it wasn't. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. We do know that France is um, preparing their UN resolution for a Palestinian state in September. The World Council of Churches is preparing for their World Week for Peace in Palestine and Israel, calling for the end of the occupation of uh, Palestine. These are Christians doing this. Um, so there's just a lot of things happening in that, that time frame. And we didn't know this when we put together the conference, by the way. It was just the, the leading that we received by the Father to put this together. And he's definitely been opening doors and hearts uh, as we get closer to the 16th of September. Amen. Amen. The other day I would call out just for those that are, you know, saying that, uh, you know, you're, you're uh, doing the uh, same thing as Francis is, uh, you know, at the end of this encyclical, he has a section called for the queen of the earth towards Mary. And, and it's a whole section about the queen of heaven. That's that, you know, read, read Jeremiah about that. That's not anything that, that, uh, that I've heard you talk about. And then he also has a separate prayer in the document for Christians at the end of the, and then the separate prayer for non-Christians uh, to, to support this new climate change initiative. So my question is, who is he leading to pray for the non-Christians? Um, wow. Yeah, you know, so. That's amazing, you, Brother Kellen. You know, let me ask you this. When, when, when we see, I had an, a moment ago an article up on the screen for the people there. Um, I closed it for the streaming so we keep it going good here. But, you know, he, there's been a lot of concern about uh, his new climate uh, change agenda. And, of course, the, the, the man that he's got that's going to be speaking there is uh, very much for depopulation. Uh, I believe that's the governor of California. He's, a, he's, he's actually speaking on behalf for the Pope there, uh, or he was invited to speak there when he comes. And... You know, my question is, is, you know, I haven't personally looked to see if the Pope is for depopulation. I don't think he would come out and say it, you know, if he, if he was. I mean, if he did, that would be a shock to the world to begin with. Uh, but but what, what do you see uh, when we, let me, let me, I go in a hundred different way, directions, Brother Kellen. When we're looking at Pope Francis is coming to the United States in September, um, he flies from Cuba directly into the United States. He speaks to both houses of Congress. Uh, he then goes uh, and speaks to, uh, or is it, he speaks, I think he speaks to President Obama first, then speaks to both houses of Congress, then goes and addresses the United Nations. Now this is, I think it's one day after the other. I, I believe when he first comes in, he speaks to President Obama. The next morning, like around 8.30 or 9.30, I believe it is, he addresses uh, both houses of Congress. The following morning at like 8.30 in the morning a.m. on Eastern Standard Time there, then he addresses the United Nations. Uh, and then, of course, there's a lot of concern about the economic stability in the United States right now uh, because Jonathan Kahn has really built this up about uh, the Shemitah year and the collapse of the economy. Um, I, I kind of wonder if this has not all been a lot of propaganda. I do believe the economy is going to fall, but uh, could it be to, to, to use this to blame it on something that, they, you know, that the Christian community would be easier to accept it? Uh, and, and perhaps even, and, and I have nothing against Jonathan Kahn at all. I believe he's a wonderful brother. He's brought out some fascinating things of God and what he's done there. Uh, but could it be that he had some inside information, though, on what was going to come uh, this coming September? And it's part of the world agenda. I say that, Brother Kellen, and the reason I bring this up 
is because even Jonathan Kahn, I believe, is going to be speaking, if he hasn't already done it, at the United Nations. You don't get to speak at the United Nations unless you've got some inside connections. Yeah, I think he just spoke at um, in front of the um, at the Congress or something there recently. I, I thought I saw a video yes. or article about that too. So again, yeah, you have to know someone to get in there. Um, but you know, I, I don't personally um, follow the the blood moon stuff. I, I you know, I think that um, it's different than what the scripture says in Joel chapter two that all is happening at the same time, not four different. Um, blood moons over you know to your period not saying that they're not a sign of anything but they're not right. a sign before the heavenly father you know sends the sun back uh to the earth that being said you know look what happened in china today and, and look what um that has done to the to the global markets and currencies uh you know look what they've been doing the past two weeks with devaluing the currency you know something might be very well coming in september you know, I, I do think that the, the, the word says that there's a deception coming or else Yeshua wouldn't have warned people to, to be watchful. He said, I'm warning you in advance so you know what to watch for. Uh, and so, yeah, is there going to be climate change? Well, read the book of Revelation. There sure is a lot of stuff happening on the earth. But, uh, you know, do, do I think that um, do I think that uh, all this is, is going to be doom and gloom in September? No, I think that the enemy is trying to get things set up for when his short time is going to be, whether that starts in September or another year. Uh, you know, I'm just taking it day by day as our, as our Messiah said to do. But at the same time, we have to watch because he did tell us to do that. What I think is that this might be also a time of um, those that are seeking the, the Father and Spirit and truth um, and asking and knocking and seeking as Yeshua said to do and seeking him while he may be found like like the father said to do I think he's going to reward those we, you know he does say he rewards those who seek him so I think people in the midst of all this hopefully are seeking him and not getting caught up on and, you know the sky is falling um, in September Amen. whether you know or not Francis or anything is is going to do what, what people are speculating we'll just have to wait and see but we do know um, that the father is, is going to come back for those and send his son for those that, are, that know him and know his voice and you know calling someone pope or whatever you know read matthew 23 we weren't supposed to be calling anybody those types of uh amen, of amen. we're only only a shoot we're all brothers yes says, you know brothers and sisters we're all equal so i'm a little wary of someone that wants to you know pump up their profile because didn't yeshua say woe well, unto you if everyone speaks well of you Amen. Uh, Amen. Well, then yeah, I, I think I'm doing fairly good right now, Brother Kellen, because I've got uh, a lot of people angry with me. Now, uh, I, one thing I'd like to just mention, though, Brother Kellen, that I think is important as well. Um, many people are looking at this as a Shemitah year, and I haven't ever really said anything about that publicly. But if we look, uh, and, and this has already been confirmed with scholars from the Dead Sea Scrolls, that the... the um, the, the Zedekite priest uh, that actually uh, separated from Jerusalem, they went down to Qumran, and this is where they had their group there. there a lot of people believe this is also the Essene community. This, they believe this is where John came from, uh, uh, the John the Baptist, that is. And, uh, but the point I want to bring out here, though, is in, when the scholars, that, the, uh, the Jewish scholars that have worked on the Dead Sea Scrolls, those that were released in 1997, um, they made note in there that the most, one of the most important things in this particular findings that they had was calendar. And they said the, the Jewish, uh, the, the Levites in Jerusalem were going by a lunar calendar. And, uh, and the Jews that were at Qumran, uh, and the other ones as well, went by a solar calendar, not like Gregorian, not like the Catholic Church uh, instituted with Constantine, uh, 365 and a quarter days, but 364 days in a year. And of course, in the Psalms that they had, there were 364 Psalms, and David was quoted in there as saying as he wrote one for every day of the year. Now, the only reason I even, I wanted to bring this up, just a little bit of information, if this is so, and I say that for the sake of those listening, because uh, many people are expecting this to be a Shemitah year, uh, and I'm not against that at all, but it does bring into question in my mind, then, are we, are we really at a Shemitah year, if that is true? That's also where the war scrolls come from, 
uh, speaking about the sons of light and the sons of darkness. And scholars have believed that the reason that is mentioned that way is because the sons of light were those that believed in the solar calendar and it was the sons of darkness that believed in the lunar calendar. Um, in, in relation, I say this because of the blood moons. Uh, could there be a sign because of the blood moons? Sure there could be. Uh, I, I haven't ever really spoke about it a lot myself. I realize that things are, are certainly building up to a head here in September. I, I have taught Brother Kellen, and you know this as well, uh, that I believe that the Vatican is wanting to fake a millennial reign. Uh, in, in that regards there, I say that because the only way Israel is going to go along with a two-state solution, even though it's going to be forced by the UN, the Vatican's already called for it, is for the Jewish people to have their temple built. And that's kind of like the carrot stick I think the Vatican is holding. That's part, believe it or not, I believe it's part of the New World Order agenda uh, because they're going to internationalize Jerusalem. We've given so much evidence to prove that they're going to internationalize Jerusalem. And, uh, and so what my concern is, is that uh, this could be something that's been in the making for quite a long time. Uh, even the collapse of the economy. I, I really wonder, is it really because of a Shemitah year or is it because the elite have intended to bring the economy down when the time was right? We know George Bush Sr. was talking about the New World Order many, many years ago. Uh, and has this been an agenda to bring about a one world government, one world order, one world religion? And of course, the irony of it all is the Vatican is the one that is calling on all of this. Well, brother, you know, I think that's a good point because, uh, you know, I, I personally believe that um, whoever the, uh, the, the final man of sin is, because there's been many antichrists, even when that, the scriptures was written, they, they, they called that out even then. But um, why would Yeshua tell us, you know, don't go out here, or don't go here, if someone is saying that they're him? Um, and, and, you know, perhaps when he was saying in the inner room, maybe he was talking about the Holy of Holies that they might be trying to mimic with this new temple. And someone sitting in there saying that they're now Yeshua or, you know, um, or equal to him. Um, you know, because I, I just don't see many Christians being fooled into some, you know, Muslim guy showing up out of a well and saying, you know, hey, I got Jesus and he's a Muslim. Now let's all convert. Uh, that doesn't seem like something that would trick, you know, a lot of people that follow Jesus. Uh, but someone that shows up after that saying that they're Jesus um, definitely could trick somebody. Maybe that's why he said, I warned you in advance. But going back really quickly to that blood moon, the reason I, you know, personally am not, you know, getting all worried about it, maybe something will happen, but let's just take a look here. Jeremiah chapter 10, this is after he, you know, starts addressing some of those lying scribes. Jeremiah chapter 10 says, uh, verse, verse 2, Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of the heaven, of the heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. So, you know, to me, when I read that, it says, do not learn the way of the heathen, which I believe is also pagans or nations, and be not dismayed at the signs of the heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. That, that says right there not to be worried about that stuff. Yeshua told us that would be happening so that we knew what to watch for when he came, but it wasn't so that we could worry and panic and, you know, the rapture is going to happen in September. Or we need to run. I'm not saying that, you know, something won't happen, but it does say not to be worried about those things says to look up for our redemption comes nigh and it says to know his voice. So me personally, I'm, I'm very much a watcher and a researcher, but above all, I'm, I'm, I'm watching and trying to make sure I know who my, my heavenly father and, and the Messiah are so that I won't be deceived. Um, Amen. That's my focus. Amen. Brother Kellen, um, it, we are definitely living in an in incredible time. There's no doubt about it. And, uh, uh, I'd actually post it on the screen for the people real quick, and I just I want to comment on this. I have to share this, send this to you as well, Brother Kellen. Um, on the screen right now, if you're watching on live stream, uh, this photograph is from Millennial Mall, and uh, what it is, it's a, uh, it's really the strangest thing. It's almost like a subliminal message for about the things of the future and the Illuminati as well. Uh, it's a huge circle there, Millennial Mall in Orlando, Florida. There. The Zodiac is on all the poles. Uh, they have all kinds of weird things that flash on the TV screens that are in a, in a round circle, but right off to each side of it are two all-seeing eyes. 
that are there. Pyramids are everywhere inside Millennial Mall. Um, I cannot help but believe that we are definitely coming up to a one world government. I do think that some of the things that we're going to see in September, Brother Kellen, are not, are almost fabricated, I should say. Um, I am very concerned that even the economic meltdown is, we could say, okay, it's a Shemitah year and it happens because of that. I, I don't have a problem with that, but I, I, I do, I, I feel like it's more intentional uh, because the only way they're going to bring about a one world government is to get the people, to get control of the people. And there's no better way than to financially break the world. Uh, completely. And the, and, and the other thing is too, in that document I was sharing earlier, and, and I wish I, I would call the name, I don't remember Brother Kellen if it was the Gospel according to Thomas uh, or the Apocalypse of Thomas, or, or no, it wasn't the Apocalypse, but I, I think it was, or, or it could have been the Apocalypse of Abraham, I forget which one, but one of the very interesting things in there though was that that King of the South, and this is what I was going to say earlier, the King of the South, he was also going to take from the elderly, take their money and then redistribute it among the people. And regardless of what people want to think about some of these canons that are not biblical, I mean, this is the exact words of Pope Francis, and he comes from the southern part of the hemisphere, uh, you know, clearly. And what's funny is that on one of the Catholic websites I read recently, where it actually stated on the Catholic website that um, they said there is no world president as of yet, and they put an exclamation point, as of yet. Uh, they, the Catholic, they, they very much believe and want the Vatican to control the world economy, the world order, and they want the Pope Francis to be the head of it all. My concern is, oh Brother Kellen, is that the people are so much hung up looking for a Muslim antichrist, and I really believe that the church has worked diligently in, amongst the Christian community, the Christian leaders, the evangelicals, which have all came back in and joined in with the Vatican to be able to push this agenda of a Muslim Antichrist or a one world leader. And, uh, and of course, they've all said that he's going to call for a one world religion, a one world government, etc. Um, I don't see it happening, but I do see that September being an unbelievable month of events that are that, that is unfolding here, and um, and I, I think America is really going to get hit hard, regardless. I, and and I will say this, brother Kellen, even you know if if they do collapse the economy in September, and I don't say that it will, but if they do, um, I'm a little hesitant. And the only reason I say that, one of the major major reasons for collapse is because Christians are already expecting it after Jonathan Kahn has posted everything. So Christian people are going to start selling off their stocks anyway. That would cause a collapse artificially, nonetheless. And, uh, but it would be short-lived. Of course, you'll have rioting and everything else when people are going through hard times, but they're going to set up that, one, that new world government with the new world currency or, or new world economic system. And once they do that, I'm concerned, Brother Kellen, this is going to be where your mark of the beast comes in. You can't buy or sell saving you take that mark. And the Bible does say you could have the number of his name, you can have the name, you can have the mark, whatever the case may be. Uh, I believe this is actually to facilitate in the Antichrist system. What's your thoughts, Brother Kellen? Yeah, you know, I definitely think that, that that's a strong possibility, Brother, um, just because it, it, it does seem like uh, first it was um, the European Union was going to produce the Antichrist and then it switched a few years to now is the, the Muslim Mahdi. Well, I, I, I tend not to try and follow the uh, the the prophetic stuff, uh, make it make it equal with the uh, what, what Yeshua said, what another faith says this is going to happen and make that, you know, that they're Antichrist. I just find it peculiar myself why people have merged Psalm 83 and Ezekiel 38 and 39 together and saying that, oh, that's coming next. And But, you know, Ezekiel 38, um, you know, follows when follows Ezekiel 35, which to me sounds very similar to Ezekiel to Psalms 83. Ezekiel 38 talks about Gog and Magog coming against the, the land of unwalled villages. And this is after, um, you know, they're, they're punished for in, in, Psalm, in Ezekiel 35 and Psalms 83. This is, David is already, you know, I think it's referencing Yeshua is already back, which to me looks almost like 
you know, this is a question I have. The the God may God war at the end of the book of Revelation um, is different, you know, than what they're saying is the Muslim body is getting ready to come in Ezekiel 38, 39, Psalm 83, all getting ready to happen and the rapture is going to happen and, and all this. You know, I think there's some space still left to happen. And I think the, Z, the Psalms 83 war, the Ezekiel, Ezekiel 35 might tie into what might be happening soon and tie into a deception where people think that, um, you know, it's happened because you read Psalm 83, Ezekiel 35, 36, they're gloating that they've taken the land of Israel, the covenant land, and, and, and what's getting ready to happen now. Um, you know, they're definitely not on all the villages in Israel. You've shown that they're building more checkpoints. So is the Ezekiel 38, 39 work getting ready to happen or is it something else? Exactly. Brother Kellen, as we uh, wrap this up here, uh, I, I would like, if you would, uh, share with the people, uh, you and your wife have sponsored this, uh, the, the event in Israel, Recon Reconciliation with Israel. I know the, the website is reconciliationwithisrael.com. Uh, mm -hmm. If you would share with the people a little bit about this, uh, how they can also be a part in helping uh, support this work, because I know uh, I know firsthand, not just when it comes to, to, to renting a facility to hold a conference like what you're doing there, anything you do in Israel is expensive. And, but I believe that the work that you're doing to, to galvanize uh, the Christian community with the Jewish community, to show them that there are true Christians that are for them, is without a doubt the most amazing uh, amazing thing that could be done at this time and and but if you would speak about that and especially the speakers that will be speaking as well brother Kelly because you have a, a, just a huge number of speakers that are speaking at this three-day conference well, brother thank you again for having me on and giving me the opportunity to do this um, again this is a free event uh, for those that are in Israel uh, that can come attend it'll be at the Jerusalem Cinematheque we received the vision for this from the father in February of this year Again, not really paying, uh, connecting any dots as to the other things that we've just covered in September. Um, but um, the, the idea was to really address and correct some of the things that have been anti-Semitic, whether they're actions or theologies or philosophies that have come under the name Christianity that do not reflect who our Messiah uh, is that um, have caused division uh, and, and misunderstanding as to who we are and what we believe as it relates to who Yeshua is and, and, and what we believe regarding, you know, the, the, the consistency of character of the Heavenly Father. Uh, a key example of that, you know, we, you, you've hi highlighted regarding the, uh, the, the changing of the Ten Commandments, which some people in, in the Catholic Church, which some people have uh, said it happened a long time ago. I even saw just recently a printed copy of that where they did change the Ten Commandments and that, that's put out there. Um, and so, you know, changing the Sabbath day is a major offense and uh, I believe our Heavenly Father's eyes. And unfortunately, a lot of people don't realize why they even go to church on Sunday and why they don't, they think Sunday is the Sabbath day. But there are some believers in Yeshua that realize we're not saved by uh, that. We are saved by, by the Lamb. But at the same time, that doesn't mean that we go out, go about and, and break the things that we're saved from breaking again. Um, and so, you know, think about the, the rich, the, the young man that came to Yeshua said, what do I need to inherit, have eternal life? Yeshua said, keep the commandments and live. Uh, unfortunately, some of those can change and altered by, by people. And, and, and unfortunately, over the last 2,000 years, a lot of murder and, and persecution has happened in the name of Christianity towards Jewish people. So. What we're looking to do with this event is, is, is address and correct some of those things, but then also find those areas of, of unity. We do have unity, some of the believers of, of Yeshua that recognize that the Sabbath, uh, idols, those things are not uh, things that we can change or rearrange in the commandments. That, that you know, the Father is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we believe that our, our Messiah will be one that will come and clarify and, and correct the things that those lying scribes and other people had twisted or added to the, the pure um, commandments and, and ways of life that the Father and, and, and His Son created for us. So we're looking at those areas of commonality, too. It's not This is not an event to bash Christianity or Christians, uh, and it's not an event to bash Catholics either. I'm not bashing Catholics, but, you know, I know that people are doing their best to seek uh, seek Jesus, but do realize and look into your faith. The word does say to seek them with Father. It says to study or to show yourself approved. 
I, I always say, you know, the people, we have so much access to information than any other generation, uh, probably in a very long time. And are we going to have an excuse when we stand before the Heavenly Father and say, oh, I didn't realize that you didn't change the Sabbath day to Sunday, that you kept it in Genesis chapter 1, says you rested on the Sabbath day. That was for men. There was no uh, Jewish people uh, there. It was it was mankind, and, and, and the Heavenly Father kept that, that day holy, and he said for us to keep it holy. Before he even gave them the Ten Commandments, he told them they need to keep the Sabbath day because that's when he created the earth, tying it back to Genesis 1. That's not something that we can then go and change, but that has been a key point of persecution, even for those believers in Yeshua historically that wanted to keep the Sabbath day. So that's just one example of, of area that there is some unity. You know, some of the Orthodox do not um, know these things about those that believe in Yeshua. And so by correcting these things and also finding areas of commonality, we're hoping that we start to be able to develop a relationship. This is not an event to try and convert, you know, Jews to Yeshua. It's just for people to understand where we come from and that we're not against them, that we do uh, recognize and, and honor the covenant that, that the Heavenly Father has both with the land of Israel and with the people of Israel. And we realize that just like um, you know Paul wrote Romans 11, that we are grafted into that olive tree. Well, the, the latter part of Romans 11 talks about when the you know the the other the other the other part of the olive tree you know comes back in right standing with with the heavenly father Amen. and so that that's our that's our passion here i'm not trying to go and convert anyone i don't think anyone of the speakers is right now and we express that to them when, when we reached out to them but we have a mix of uh people that are gentile by dna we have a mix that believe in Yeshua. We have a mix of Jews uh, and Israelites by DNA that believe in Yeshua, like yourself and some a few of our other speakers. And we have Orthodox people, uh, Orthodox Jewish people that are speaking as well, that, that are passionate about just finding that, that commonality and, and putting some of these things in the past. Uh, unfortunately, some people uh, that are call, call themselves Christians are, are not uh, adhering to the scripture, not following the covenants. They're, they're joining the BDS movement they're supporting, you know, the Vatican when it's saying, oh, I support the two-state solution to buying the land. People need to get back to reading their Bible is, is one of the things that, you know, I, I stand by. And, and, and I think that this conference is looking to look at Scripture and find unity in Scripture, not unity in politics. We will discuss some of the things in current events as it relates to Scripture on the last day. And, and just making sure people understand that, you know, the promises to Israel actually still are relevant. The church hasn't replaced Israel at all. And, and Yeshua he himself said he was came only to the lost, he, he was in, only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I think that means the physical lost, and I think that also means those that want to be grafted in to the the, the the commonwealth of Israel, just like there was the mixed multitude that came out of Egypt. So, you know, uh, brother, I would just say for people that want to participate, go online if you're not in, in Israel or can't get to Israel, you can watch online for free. Just put your email in there, we'll send you the link. If you do want to support financially, that, that's greatly appreciated as well. There's a link to donate via PayPal there. But we're not charging for any of this. Um, you know, we're not saying we've got every point right, but we do know that the Heavenly Father didn't change his character. He didn't change for, you know, things to love him with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. And the how to do that is simplified as in, in, in the Ten Commandments. You know, look at the Ten Commandments. As, as Christians, we shouldn't be having any disagreement with our Orthodox uh, Jewish brethren regarding those things at all. Amen, Brother Kellen. Uh, I am actually, what I'm doing right now is uh, I'm pulling up the website for people so that they can actually see this as well. It's uh, the, the, the website uh, for Brother Kellen for this meeting here is Reconciliation with Israel. Uh, dot com uh, www.reconciliationwithisrael.com uh, you can see that on your screen as of right now uh, the the uh, there's a donate button right there that you can that you can be a part a part of this here uh, brother Kellen has who is speaking in here uh, uh, quite a few speakers that'll be speaking here uh, Avi Lipkin is one of those speakers there uh, as well and um, uh, Myself, I'll be speaking. Victor uh, Schlater will be speaking from South Pacific Island. David Zett, uh, United with Israel, will be speaking. Uh, uh, just uh, incredible. Y Yair uh, Davidi, uh, who is uh, the picture here, he, 
brother Yair doesn't look the same anymore now. Now he has his beard way down. Uh, yeah, yeah, that, that's an older picture. He's got a, he's got quite a large, large beard. I, I met him last year in Israel. Very, very uh, interesting individual looking into the lost tribes and also um, sharing some perspective because I think he, he will be doing at the conference as to why uh, Jews don't want uh, Christians to missionize to them. And I think some yes. of these things uh, Christians haven't heard before. And, you know, I think those that are passionate about this, the spreading of, of Yeshua's message should tune in because I think there's going to be perspective that they don't, that they may not understand why uh, the way that a lot of Western Christians present the Messiah from the first half of the Bible, the reason why Jews cannot uh, even listen to that, the way that we present him. Amen. Amen. No, I can understand that, Brother Kellen. So, but anyway, uh, Brother Kellen, we thank you so much for being on the, the news this evening talking about the New World Order. And it's, I know it's a very controversial subject there and also sharing about the conference here in September. Uh, as Brother Kellen had mentioned already before, he had no idea when he first set this conference up, because he did this quite a while back, uh, when he first began to build this, and then the date being in September, which is kind of ironic, uh, I will be speaking uh, mainly in regards uh, to my Jewish brethren that will be there to let them see and know the anti-Semitism that is, that is coming from within the church and how it is directed at them uh, in, in a very unusual way. Uh, but but I, will, I, will, I want to take that opportunity and, and let them see the biblical prophecies that are being fulfilled um, by the very group that is very much uh, against them in the dividing of the land uh, and for them to wake up to this point here. Everything that I'll be speaking about is coming directly from uh, the, the, the uh, Old Testament or the, um, uh, the Tanakh, as we say, the Jewish people say. Uh, and... Uh, Got some interesting things that we'll be sharing and I'm hoping will also uh, cause my brethren to wake up and say, God has given us, this is our land. But uh, to show them as well, there are true Christians that stand with them. Uh, as we have the little thing on our Facebook page, Unconditionally We Stand With Israel. Uh, I say that not in when it comes to the evil that we, that, that we do as Jews, but, uh, but, but as far as in the standing together in unity. Uh, we stand with them unconditionally, uh, not the dividing of the land of Israel. So, Brother Kellen, any last comments before we uh, close? No, I, I just encourage people to, to go and, and sign up, whether or not they can contribute financially. You know, that's between them and the Heavenly Father. He, he's been pulling this together and providing for it. So, um, I, you know, I just want to say that in the midst of all the, the storm that might be happening, you know, we're not the only one that I know there's some other positive things happening in, 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 in this time frame amongst, uh, you know, the people that believe in, in Yeshua and even amongst uh, Israelis uh, and, and Jews. So, I, you know, I, I think that this can be a beacon of light uh, amidst per, perhaps, uh, you know, some things happening, but maybe nothing will happen that, 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 that people are saying will happen. But at least we can say that we, we went and we 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 corrected some things that are still a, a thorn in the side of people uh, that unfortunately shouldn't even be tied to who our Messiah is. So if you're passionate about uh, Israel, uh, you're passionate about the Heavenly Father, you're passionate about Yeshua, Jesus, then you know this is something, whether you agree with everything that the speaker says or not, it might be something interesting to watch because we're even having offline communities of inter interaction between Orthodox Jews and Reformed Jews and, and Christians, the dialogue happening about these things, not on the basis of converting, but a basis of strengthening a relationship together. Amen, Brother Kellen. Thank you so much for being with us there. We'll be streaming also this on our live stream uh, media as well during the conference there, the 16th through the 18th of September in Jerusalem. If you're going to be in Jerusalem, or if you're going to go ahead and make plans, you got not much time left to be able to even get a, probably get a decent price ticket. But if you want to come, you do need to register. There is a place to register online. It is limited seating there in Israel. Uh, if you're listening from Israel, we have a lot of uh, listeners on Israeli News Live and as well as the New Institute of Biblical Research uh, that listen to our broadcast. Uh, if you live in Israel and you want to be a part of this meeting and come there during this time frame, please go and register. Uh, the, the building that Brother Kellen has, I think, sits about 700 people. 
uh, and the people have definitely been registering for the event and we expect uh, the place to be full. So anyway, shalom, God bless you. I'm Stephen Benoon with Brother Kellen Davison and you're watching Israeli News Live. Good night.